Good afternoon friends, I was not going to video this one and I very much doubt that this video will make it onto my YouTube channel anyway but I did want to get this on record as I always do for the client now if it does make YouTube, welcome, here we are and I'm making a mockery of what I've just said but look at this guitar, beautiful, beautiful thing Epiphone Les Paul Standard Flame Maple top on there, I don't know if it's a cap or a veneer but it looks fantastic. Nice bit of weight to this. I don't think it's weight relieved. Made in China. It does have Epiphone Deluxe tuners on there. Tulip style. Beautiful. Uh, a nice truss rod cover on there. The reason, the way we can tell truss rod covers between Epiphone and Gibson is the Epiphones have three screws. Two at the bottom, one at the top. Whereas Gibson have two screws. Lovely, lovely figure to the back as well. Mahogany, I imagine, and mahogany neck. Uh, fantastic stuff, nice um, hardware on there. Uh, but it's in for a setup, it's first setup. While I, something I like, uh, it's quite nice on this actually, it does have, doesn't have big fat chunky frets, it has medium frets. They're not massive at all, which is really good. One thing I don't like on these guitars is the knot. I've not been asked to change the knot, all I've been asked to do is to just set this up. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to take the strings off, I don't think. Oh, I'm going to have to because I'm going to have to polish the frets. So we are going to stick a new set of strings on there and put some D'Addario um, 1046s on there. And they are the EXL 110s. But yeah, I just wanted to show this and get it on camera. What a beautiful guitar this is. So I don't know anything about it. I um, don't know if it needs any fret levelling or not. I'm not going to do any fret levelling. I'm just going to give it a setup. Uh, my remit from the client is don't touch any frets or anything. Just set it up, get it playing the best you can and uh, Bob's your uncle so that is what I'm going to do um, that will entail setting the action setting the relief on the neck setting the action at the knot setting the action at the 12th fret making sure I've got right amount of relief in the neck which I've already said making sure the intonation on the bridge is right and we've got a, just a nice action without any buzz anywhere I'll check every nut bolt and screw make sure everything's all tight I'll check the pots and the electric see if there's any scratch in there just a standard setup, 50 quid. Um, I will check the frets, by the way, and if there are any uh, really high ones, I'll let the client know. But uh, I'll get it set up no matter what state the frets are in. Uh, I'll also be polishing the frets and treating the fingerboard with some mineral oil. So just a standard setup on this, uh, with a standard setup, but a standard setup is what I call a player setup. We get the guitar playing as well as we possibly can with as low an action as we possibly can. The guitar gets a good clean, the neck gets an oil treatment, the frets get polished, all the electrics get checked, um, the intonation set, the action set and the relief. So we'll just get it in supreme playing order. That is what a play, player setup includes. I do charge £50 for a player setup. Some people may think that it's expensive. Um, I actually don't think it's expensive. Uh, the only reason, the way it differs from an intensive setup, which is, uh, I think that's £80 now, I've put it up a little bit. Uh, with an intensive setup, you do get up to five frets levelled uh, and recrowned, and you also get your electrics fixed and uh, maintained. So I do two levels of setup. I do a player setup for £50, an extended or an intensive setup for £80. Anything beyond that, if you need a complete fret level, you're going to be looking into uh, a little bit more than £100. Uh, but this is having a player set up, good value, uh, you will get the guitar back cleaned, looking superb and in its best possible playing state. So I'm going to crack on with this, get it done, see you later. I'm going to stick the camera on just in case I am going to release this video. Chances are if I'm filming it I'll release it. Just move the camera down a bit because I'm, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm setting the intonation. And the intonation's all over the place, it's way out. I've done the three bass strings. G string sharp. So we need to move the screw away from the neck or towards the bridge or towards the tailpiece just 
a little bit short. I'm just going to take it right to the end of its travel. Yeah. That's about as far as it will go. So if it's not intonated there, tough. Temperature can make a little difference. And chances are I'm not getting a perfect reading because the string actually is really quite high. So I'm bending my strings that a little bit more. Virtually all of the strings have been sharp to the 12th fret, it means we've got a lengthen everything. So we're just letting them move my saddles further away, just lengthen the string. A bit more. So we're right at the end of the travel on some of these, which is never nice, you don't want to be right at the end, you want a bit of adjustment either way. That's good now. I think we're just about there. I've not checked the relief yet. Crikey me. Still a bit sharp on the beat. When it comes to intonation, this is how I remember it, because I'm looking at the guitar this way. If we are sharp at the 12th fret, we move the saddle to the right. If we're flat on the 12th fret, we move the saddle to the left. Flat and left are four letters, sharp and right are five letters, so we always know. If we're sharp, we move the saddle to the right as I look at it. If we're flat, we move the saddle to the left as I look at it. So just remember the amount of letters in each word. Sharp right, flat left. These are a little bit sharp. So that's it, we have the guitar in tune, we have the intonation set, it means when we harmonic or play a note with 12 frets, it's exactly the same as playing it open. So that's really good. Just need to check for relief. I'd like to see around about 0.2, 0.25 millimeters, right up between the fifth and seventh fret. Um, I've not eyeballed that. I'll just get a feeler gauge. Take something around about 0.25 and see where we are. Looks to be around about right. We've got too much relief in there. For me, we need to straighten that neck a little bit. We're going to remove the truss rod cover.
we should have a four millimeter adjuster. One of the screws has gone AWOL, oh it's just there, look, there you go. We just need to slightly tighten that to reduce the relief. Four mil adjuster should be right, yeah, we've got a four mil in there. I always use a T-bar type adjuster. Uh, I'd love to be able to get one for every size truss rod, but have any, can I really get, really get the metric one? So I'm gonna tighten the truss rod just a little to straighten it, I think I should straighten it. I've been doing this like you'd think I've been doing this long enough now to know which way to turn a truss rod, wouldn't you? Right, there you go, that looks pretty good. 0.25 at the seventh. Yeah, just slide it nicely under there. And the fifth. So we're just gonna ease back just a tad. I think 0.25 under the sixth. And listen. That's perfect. That's how I like that. Now I'm going to check the action at the 12th fret. I'd like to be seeing 1.75 mil there, 1.5 mil here. That is the difference from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. 1.5 mil on the treble side, 1.75 mil on the bass side. Again, I will grab me Stumac string action gauge. Most of my tools are Stumac nowadays. I've done with uh, buying cheap crap. Only a couple of companies I use. I buy Stumac gear. I buy I buy some stuff from um, Elmer Tools. I buy a lot of my precision tools from um, GMI in Greece. Right, 1.5 on the treble is bang on. We're about 2.25 on the base. So we are going to reduce the height of the bridge. If I can get screwdrivers to go in there, that will not fit in there. I'm going to just file that down, I think. That's at 1.75 there. Check the other side again. Can't see it from there. We are 1.5 on the treble. 1.75 on the base. Just need to bring this up just a little on the treble side, that should be absolutely fine. Of course, I'm going to retune the guitar again. Right, we are 1.5, 1.75. That is where we want to be. The action was too high and there was too much relief in the neck. No wonder the guitar was difficult to play. Something else we're going to have to look at as well is the string height above the first fret. Now let's just get back in tune. down to D low. This guitar will play a lot better now. But strings are pinching a little bit in the knot. So we're in tune. We have the action set at the 12th fret. And we have the right amount of relief. We're just going to check the intonation again. He's a little bit sharp still. Everything else is good. So the D string, we still need to move that saddle. A little bit further back, further away, should I say. Turn and a half should do it. Showing short, very strange. Just in case it's pinching, right, there we go. Fourth 
finally we've got the intonation absolutely right so the guitar's in tune got the intonation set the relief set the action set intonation all done just need to check the height um, at the nut end I'm going to leave the camera exactly where it is okay again this is not an exact measurement or an exact setting but I like to set this is me this is how I like to set the strings above the first fret the gap from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string on the bass side I like to see about 0.3 millimeters that's way too high I bet you that's about 0.5 we're going to cut that down actually about 0.6 way too high it means when we finger or bar a chord in the first three frets we're going to go really sharp because I want to bend the string a lot more so we're going to carve these nut slots I would like to see back to the measurements I like to see about 0.3 millimeters this side gap and about 0.2 millimeters this side so let's get a 0.2 as being here in England we are metric we measure in millimeters we don't do fractions of inches or whatever like we do in America And there you go we are high there also so i'm going to grab my knot files hosco knot files i'm going to pull me out a 1046 set i'm going to do this all you can see in this live by the way uh doing all of this live i don't get any of those right so i think sure of a 1040 there's a 46 36 don't have a 26 closest where was a 28 we have a 10, a 13, we don't have a 17, we have a 16, so I'll show you how we get around that. So, okay, fantastic nut slot files, these. I'm going to start at the treble end. I'm going to move the guitar back just a little. I'm not going to zoom in. Um, you can see enough where you are. So, strings are 10, 13, 17, 26, 36, 46. I'm going to measure the 10, at the first fret, measure the gap. That's actually not bad where it is. Well, I'm going to leave that one and I'm just going to check the next one, the 13. Let's see about 0.25, I like to see there. If it's ringing a 0.25, I'm going to leave that as well. Just see where we are. We've got a 0.25 there. Now we are going to slightly carve the 13. So we'll take the 0.013 there and we're just going to ever so gently just carve into there. These will cut a perfect U shape. You'll get that perfect semicircle. It won't be a V like you get with some of the cheaper crapper files. These are Hosco files, they're brilliant. I think we'll find we're just about there with this one. There you go, just buzz in. That's that one done. That really was that difficult. Not at all. I'm going to go back with a 0.2 on the high E. I'm just going to give that 13's done. There's the 16, I want the 10. There's the 10. We're just going to shave a little bit out on the high just bring it down that little bit you could bring these lower if you wanted to uh, you could get out to 0.1 y try and get that low all you're going to do is you're probably going to cut it too low you're going to put a new nut on there it's always a giveaway knowing you've cut into it when you go flat Should just be buzzing now. Almost perfect. So we're going to look at the third string, 0.017. You want to be looking at 0.25 millimeters there. I can find it. It's there somewhere. Right, let's 
close it and start again because I've lost it completely. There you go, right there, 0.25. So we don't have a 0 0.017, we do have a 0 0.016. So it's a little bit thinner, a tiny, tiny bit thinner than it needs to be. What we're gonna do with that is, we are gonna slightly, I'm gonna carve into it like this, and we're just gonna flay it. We're gonna angle, angle, just flay it open a little bit. Perfect, just buzzing, that's exactly what I want. So at 0 0.25, we're gonna say them again, 0 0.25 on the fourth string, which will be the D, which will be a 26. We don't have a 26, we have a 28. So that's a little bit wider than it needs to be. That's perfect for this. Don't need to carve a lot out of it. Slightly angling it down towards the tuners. Quite a nice knot this. It is a cyclovac type substance. It will be a man-made bone, some composite resin. A bit like the uh, Graftec Tusk. That's perfect again. Look at about 2.75 here on the 36. Again, not too much. Just buzzing on 2.5, that means we're about 2.7, that's perfect. I'm gonna go with 0 0.3 on the low E, or the sixth string. Even a little bit under is fine, but 0 0.3 is good. So that's one. The point 0.046. Don't need to go too much with this one. Again, just nice and gentle, just slide it down. to wipe your files as well. I know I've not done that on the other ones, but I will do that before I use them again. That's how we cut the nut slot. So 0 0.3 this end, 0 0.2, and slightly gradient down, slight gradient down there. So we have the guitar all set up. We have a relief set, 0 0.25 mil at the sixth, 1.7 mil, 1.5 mil action at the 12. We have intonation set at the bridge, and we have the nut slots cut. Um, so that is set up. I should be absolutely fine. All I've got to do now is check that the pots aren't scratching. And that they're all working right. If they are, we're going to remove the strings. We're going to treat the fingerboard with some mineral oil. I'm going to polish the frets. Once that's done, we're going to put some new strings on there, stretch the strings in, tune it up, and that will be done. 
one way I gauge the right amount of relief in a neck is I set it to 0.25 millimeters on the round about the sixth fret and normally when I take the strings off with no tension on there the neck is then dead straight so that's how I like to uh, gauge how I set relief and it just always seems to work this way whether it be a Gibson type or a Fender type guitar that neck is dead straight now I've taken the strings off you saw me set the tension on there and I've been across the frets with a fret rocker and there are a couple of tiny tiny little uh, high spots in a couple of areas but nothing to worry me at all like I said we're not going to do any leveling but there is one fret in particular fret 11 here it's particularly high and it's the only bad one there is so I'm going to level that one and I'm going to do that free I'm not going to charge for it and the reason I'm doing that is I've got a new file brand new from Elmer Tools um, don't know where they're based but it looks to be a pretty good diamond file it costs 50 quid I thought I've got a load of brand new Stumac tools over here which I'm yet to use their files they hundreds of pounds worth in there, I'm not even going to use them yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to level this one fret and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly just tap it and make sure it's seated correctly I'm only going to tap it with the nylon end of my fretting hammer just to make sure we are seated correctly before we go removing any material and that has more or less cured the problem it now is no longer high the one next to it is a little bit high now so we're going to tap that one as well sometimes it can just be a seating problem and let's try that one again and that's it they all seem to be pretty good now so what I'm going to do is with this file I just bought this, I'm going to crown it with this file, this is a crowning file and it should just be absolutely fine. Like I said, I'm testing this file out, it's brand new, not been used on anything before. And that is a beautiful smooth fret, it's beautifully crowned and it has not worn anything on the new file. So quite pleased, I've only bought this file just for going over these parts near the body rather than use a normal file and having to tape everything up like I've been doing over the years and getting in at this silly angle which you don't want to be doing a lot of my contemporaries and friends in the business use these files so I thought I'll get one I don't want to get a Stumat one it's 122 quid plus import tax plus shipping I thought it's a bit dear so I'll try this one out so I'm quite impressed with this it's got a one for wide and jumbo frets there and one for medium frets on this side so yeah really quite pleased uh, yeah, happy with that. So that's it. So all I need to do now is I'm going to let's just cover this. I'm going to spray some mineral oil on the guitar, on my neck. I'm, I'm going to polish these frets shortly. That's quite a bit on there. Just want to spray over here, not get any on the guitar if I can help it. Because that's going to be the next part of the job anyway. So, lemon oil, you know it's lemon oil, I call it mineral oil because it is mineral oil, especially formulated for the darker woods on the fingerboards. Uh, be thinking Pal Ferro, your uh, Ebony's, Rosewoods, what have you. This will nourish the wood slightly, it'll also any gunk, sweat, finger grime will float off. And while this is doing its thing, I'm going to let that soak in for 10, 15, 20 minutes, what have you. I don't want to use that one, I'm going to use this one because this has already got a little bit of oil on it. I'm going to polish the frets. And we're going to cover the pickles because I'm going to be polishing with um, some extra fine grade steel wool. So we need to make sure that, no, his pickles have still got the plastic covers on which is nice. But we're going to cover anyway, just so we don't get any filings where they don't, we don't need them to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to seal everything off. And when I say seal everything off, it's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to go always. Just bear with me a second, just need to close this door. 
because my wife's just coming in with the dog and she'll come in and hey, baby, blah, 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 blah. so anyway let's get these pickups sealed off because we don't want any filings in there so that is nicely sealed both pickups and there you go we're not going to get any filings in the pickups at all and it means I can polish the frets without worrying about where the filings are going and once we've done all this we can just blow the filings away we're not going to get anything stuck to the magnets of the pickups uh, Scotch 3M tape by the way you know, low tech I've been using this for years you know, on recommendation of Nigel Roberts so polishing the frets And we're going to need some uh, fingerboard protectors. They're wrongly called fret protectors, they're not really protecting the frets, they're protecting the fingerboard, stopping scratching it. And I'm going to need two for this. I'm going to use this one at that end and this one at this end. And that means we can polish the frets without scraping or scratching the fingerboard, the wood. And I'm just going to need to grab me some um, steel. Well, I've got some here which I've already slightly used. It has got a bit of oil on there, which is going to be absolutely fine, it's not going to be a problem. And we're just going to straight over the frets, remove any grime. And that's as difficult as it is. And the oil is still on the fingerboard. This is protecting the fingerboard, so we don't put any scratches in there. And the oil is still doing its thing, and I can crack on and get these frets done. We've got the pickups protected. So we're not going to any, get any iron filings in the pickups, and this doesn't take long. Just a few rubs with a steel wall, finest grade steel wall, grade 0000, fantastic stuff. We could really bring these up to a beautiful shine, remove all the grime. I'm going to let that oil do its thing for 15-20 minutes, like I say, and we're going to wipe it off in a bit. And that'll bring any grime with it, and it'll also nourish the wood. Some people say it doesn't actually nourish the wood, of course it nourishes the wood. Doesn't disappear when you wipe it off. There you go, you can see we're down to fret 12 there. And this is the one we've just slightly leveled. This should come up beautiful. Let's give it a polish. I'm going to need to give it this one polish. And that's fantastic. So this doesn't take long at all. Not totally necessary, it's just nice to get that grime off. I mean, this is not an old guitar. I can remember when uh, Andy bought this and he said, I'm not going to bring it for a setup, I'm just going to enjoy it. And he has enjoyed it, but it did need a setup. It's not had a setup at all, not by me anyway. Just going to check this uh, one. I've just got. Oh, that's fine. This one just a little bit more. But that is it. You've more or less seen the whole setup. All I've got to do now is put a new set of strings on there, stretch them in, tune the guitar up, and this is done. I was not going to film this, like I said, because I don't think I had time. But you know what? I thought I'd just get the camera running and see where we are. It'll make a nice video. Someone will enjoy it. I've got at the moment. We are the 11th of December, Year of Our Lord 2020. And I've got 18 videos stacked up because I've not been banging them on. I've been putting one on a week. I've been that busy this year. I've got 18 videos actually stacked up, ready to go. So that's fantastic because when I slow down a little bit next year, uh, we'll, we'll always have something to put online. So anyway, that's done. I'm going to let the oil do its thing for 15 minutes. I'll come and clean all the oil off. I'm going to get some kitchen water in a minute, wipe all that off because I don't want to be putting anything abrasive on there. I don't want to scratch anything. And once that's done, we're going to check all these again. Some more Stumac tools. I bought loads of Stumac tools recently. But uh, let's see what we've got here. Set of Stumac guitar spanners, metric and imperial. And these should be great for um, tightening these things. They're going to be round about a 10, are they? Might be a little bit bigger. The 10's too small, I think. Is it? Yep, turns too small, so let's go with this one. 
that's way too small. Show one pretty close. Am I gonna have one that fits? That kind of fits seven sixteenths. No, it doesn't fit at all. Oh, well done. Oh, these are ten. Ah, oh, they are a ten, that's why. Just nip these up just a little bit. These are little jobs I do. I don't really film these type of jobs. Just make sure these are on. We don't want to tighten them too much and dig into the headstock and put an indentation in there. But there you go. They're done. All the little things I do, I'll check the screws and the strap pins. Nice long screwdriver there. That's in nice and tight. That one needed a little bit of tightening, but that's done now. So these little jobs as well. Let me grab. There we go, guys. I'm going to grab some kitchen roll. I should really have a lot of this in this room. Uh, right, I've got to get that. So we're back in a second, guys. So I'm now wiping off the uh, mineral oil, and look at this. It's a remarkable, isn't it, how much muck you get off uh, a fingerboard. Let me just do it from here, look. Clean piece here. Just do his last five or six frets. And that's all grime and muck off your fingers and off the strings. I'm just going to finish off. And there you go, look, that's just this view here, look. Remarkable, isn't it? I use this kitchen roll just to wipe off all the excess mineral oil I got down this end here. I wanted it nice and clean. I'm going to take the unused, brand new, well, it's not brand new, it is slightly used, microfiber cloth here. And this guitar is now ready for restringing. We've got no filings over here from the uh, steel wool. And this we can just take off nice and steady. We don't want to rip any paint off it. It has happened before. Oh, we took his plastic off there. Sure, we want that even on there. So we'll leave his plastic on there. It will come off at some point. Didn't even know that was on there. I knew it was on the pickups. But anyway. Some time, isn't it? Well, there you go. So that's guitar now ready for new strings. So that's all I've got to do. I'm going to bang some strings on some uh, EXO 110s, and you know them as Deodario 1046s. So we'll stretch them in, tune it up, and uh, the guitar will be good to go. Well, friends, we are all done, and that's not bad to say I wasn't going to film this. Uh, just in the end, I just decided to leave the camera running. And uh, that's it, all strung up with some um, Deodario 1046s. So it's had uh, everything it needed doing. Uh, but it didn't need a fret level, not a major one anyway. I've leveled one fret, or I've sorted one fret out. All I've really done with this is giving it a, a good setup, polish the frets, clean the fingerboard, cut the nut, um, and giving it a good setup. We've got the action nice and low, uh, a little bit of relief in there, the intonation's all been done. And uh, I've just checked the pickup heights, they're all fine, checked all the electrics are working, I've had it plugged in, and it's great. And there you go, what a beautiful looking guitar. Uh, you know, I could be seeing one of these myself. One thing I, d I personally don't like about this is the pickups. I don't think they're high output. If they're just a little bit, uh, for me, or for my sound, they're a little bit weak, I like something a little bit beefier than that. On full distortion through my amp, they sound a little bit wimpy. Um, you know, but you haven't quite got the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the balls of a nice meaty pickup. Nice all the same, you could play any style with this. But yeah, lovely, lovely looking guitar, it's absolutely fantastic. Still got the plastic covers on virtually everything, there, there and there. Peeled a little bit off on this corner because I didn't know it was on. But yeah, there it is. Um, Epiphone Les Paul Standard. Very, very nice looking guitar. Um, and all set up properly. Certainly it has benefited from a proper setup. The action's nice and low. 
plays fantastic up and down the neck everywhere sounds really nice but that is it so I'm going to crack on I've got more to do um, I don't have a lot of time December I do the workshop is actually shut I'm not taking nothing else in I'm actually fully booked through January and halfway through February maybe even all the way all the way through February so I'm going to crack on so I'll just remind you of who I am and what I do um, but before I do that, my website, facebook.com forward slash ng17, that's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. I am Victor, I am your friend friend. Until the next time, as always, God bless you, be good to each other, I'll see you in the next one.